Hi guys, this is Scott Wolf, General Manager at Cunis GMC in Belvedere, and welcome to another episode of Cunis Car Convo. Today we're going to be chatting with Kelly Richel Bailey, founder of Nicholas Richel Foundation in this 2024 Yukon XL AT4. <music> So what do you think of the vehicle? Oh my gosh, it is amazing. I walked up and I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> you come in here and all of the electronics are going. I kind of feel like, I, I mean, I think I could live in this thing. <laughs> you could, it's big enough, that's for sure. <laughs> I guess it is fancy. It is very, very fancy. I am riding in style today. Good. Glad you like it. So I know I've gone to the website. I've read about your organization. Um, I watched the CNN Hero interview. Very cool. Um, for someone who doesn't know about Nick's foundation, uh, how would you describe it? You know, I think the easiest way to think about it, it is a make-a-wish for kids who are too old for make-a-wish. So we help kids who are uh, missed out on make-a-wish, ages 18 to 24, who are battling cancer, have a wish just like make a wish does that's great that's exciting I and mean, talk about just missing out and being able to include those kids in that that's that's really special yeah i mean if you think about back when you were 18 years old and your life was right in front of you uh and all of a sudden you hear the words you have cancer uh you know you're you're not quite all the way on your feet you're you're certainly at that adult age but you're not totally grown up yet and not able to have your own resources so next wish tries to bring that hope of a wish to these kids uh who are just fighting a really really tough battle yeah absolutely mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Uh, tell us about Nick. Um, what what about him inspired you to continue with this and start this whole adventure? Well, Nick, um, as a young man, he was very persistent. <laughs> and when he found out that he, you know, he got a wish from Make a Wish, and to him it was so so doggone special to have that that wish and have that open look keep him looking for the future. You know, he kept coming up with wishes they actually couldn't do. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he came first. He wanted, uh, you know, that game show deal or no deal where they opened the briefcase. Oh, sure. Yeah. He wanted to yeah. be on that. Okay. They can't do that. <laughs> then he wanted to be a towel boy for the Chicago Bears for season. They can't do Ooh, that. Come on. That's a legitimate request. Right. <laughs> I'm The next one I'm actually glad they couldn't do. He actually asked for a pet monkey. Oh. I am here to tell you they cannot do pet monkey. Okay. <laughs> But he met another kid during his cancer um, journey. Um, his name was Nate. And he, Nate told Nick that he missed out on make a wish by one month. He was diagnosed oh. with cancer one month after his 18th birthday. So he did not qualify. Oh, and you know, that hit Nick like a, just a ton of bricks. Sure. I can still hear him. We were um, getting, he was getting treatment down at um, the National Institute of Health. And I can still hear him busting through the door. Mom, Mom, we got to do something. They got missed out on Make-A-Wish. Mm. We got to do something. So for him, you know, if you, uh, he just was a loyal friend and he, he just knew that he needed this wish to keep him hopeful, to sure. give him happiness and joy because everybody else was going off with their lives and doing their things and, and they, these guys were fighting for their life. Right. So that wish meant, meant a lot. So it hit Nick pretty hard that yeah. this was an injustice that needed to be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it stayed with him and his cancer progressed. And at the time, you know, I said, hey, Nick, we're trying to save your life right now. So if, you know, when this is over, we'll try to do something. Yeah. But to Nick, it just stayed with him. And uh, it was about eight months later from that event. And um, we were at a different place looking for treatments. And uh, he, he again said, Mom, I want you to come over and I want you to listen to this song. And he played for me a Dave Matthews song and, and the words were, to change the world, start with one step. However small, the first step is hard to symbol. And he, and he asked me again, Mom, can you help him have a wish too? And I didn't realize that that next morning, Nick would go into for a 20 minute procedure. And during that 20 minute procedure, uh, his tumors would invade a major blood 
vessel and he would die in the arms of the doctors that morning. But his last wish, that wish to help, just continued to nag and nag and nag at me. You know, I didn't know anything about charities or raising money or delivering wishes at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Nick was pretty persistent in his afterlife, just like he was in his life. And and until it, you know, he kept nagging at me until one day I, I called his oncologist and I said, hey, talk to him. And Nick had this idea. And I don't know, you know, if it really makes any sense at all. And Dr. Pinto said, Dad Kelly, Nick was spot on. There's a gap. These kids have no programs. So if you want to try to do something, you know, please do. Yeah. So what that's, a big that's heart. What yes. I mean, to be to be thinking about others until his last breath. That's yeah. that's amazing. I should have brought some tissues with it. <laughs> I got goosebumps. <laughs> that's that's yeah. pretty cool. And for you to be able to continue that, and how long has it been going on now? Well, Nick passed away in March of 2012, okay. uh, and we put on our very first fundraising event in October of, t of that same year. Since then, so since then we've delivered about 315 wishes. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. To kids and, you know, all kinds of different wishes, you know. Mm -hmm. Some are thing wishes, some are a lot of travel wishes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of travel yeah. wishes. Disney's still a big favorite. Okay. Uh, but we still have other ones. Hawaii, this last year we've done tons of Hawaii wishes. Okay. And uh, Alaska's coming up and has an up and cover. Oh, sure. No, All right. Halibut fishing in Alaska. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that was going to be another question. Uh, the different kinds. Has there been any one wish that's really stuck with you? <laughs> You know, I, I always say my favorite wish is the next one. But, okay. But there have been some some real heartwarming ones, yeah. uh, very heartwarming wishes. You know, some of the wishes are to celebrate the end of treatment. And so when he'll, we'll hear a lot is, you know, my, my parents, my mom, my dad, my mother helped me through this. I want to give back. I want to go and take them on this special trip. Mm -hmm. And some are more... Um, keep fighting wishes so just give them the energy rejuvenate because the, the chemo and the treatment's getting so long yeah. just to keep them fighting mm -hmm. and then we've had some last wishes um one of the one of the ones that i think goes down in in my book is one of the kind of little miracles inside the wish is the one we just recently did for a young woman her name was abby and she's fighting she was fighting osteosarcoma uh, her wish was to go to Hawaii, but she couldn't make that flight. That flight was too hard. So she said, hey, is it possible that you all could get me an RV and we could and we could drive back to where my family is from, to Montana. And, and before I pass away, I'd like to be able to see everybody again and be, be out there. So yeah. I'd never, we never did an RV wish before, so I put it out there to rent an RV and the first immediately I get a phone call and, and it was from uh, a man who said, hey, we're a St. Jude's family, we wanna help you. And he was only uh, about 40 minutes away from where she lived, so we were able okay. to get the RV, her and her mom, and her dog, and her it was a service dog, and her sister were able to drive from Illinois all the way to Montana, meet with her family, and then share a very special moment where she was able to show her mom where she wanted her remains spread. Oh, it was a cool. very personal, very yeah. personal thing. And her mom was so grateful because she would not have ever got that opportunity to right. have that conversation with her daughter. That the, the other thing that was miraculous about it is that seven days they were together in that trip was the only time this young woman wasn't in pain. She was in so much pain, she couldn't make that Hawaii trip. It was too, her body was just riddled with cancer. And she was blessed with those seven days to be pain-free. And, and that, that was amazing. Um, when she got back from the trip, sadly, she had to go back into the hospital and, and, uh, and she passed away in August. Yeah. Uh, but that blessed time that they had together, you know, it's, it's not only for the patient, but it's for the family. Sure, right? absolutely. A lot of people involved in the whole thing. Right, and you know, for me, having my wish trip with Nick, it provided happy memories for me, and yeah. I hang on to those because 
there's only a few of them, you know? I only have a finite number of memories of, that I can create with them. And so the memories we create of happy times are so, so important for, yeah. for everybody. Sure, too few and far between, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that makes complete sense that you say the, the best wish is the next one just after listening to that story how how can you not want to keep going and keep right, going right. that's amazing that's just really cool uh how can someone get involved in next wish well we're um a volunteer powered organization so you know, i have a, a full-time job and and so we need lots of volunteers okay we need lots of volunteers we have volunteer wish makers we call those the heart and soul of our organization because they actually work together with the family and the patient to carve out that wish. Mm -hmm. um, so those are really important. And we've got, we do a lot of events and fundraising. Right. So we always need people to help us with events or, you know, come up with ideas. Or, and there's some people who are like, you know, I just want to, I think I can help us just organize and actually run the foundation type thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's those kind of longer term commitments too. Okay. Uh, so really, if you've got time or talent and you want to help, certainly do that. And um, of course, donations are always welcome. <laughs> okay, okay. And how would one reach out to do that? Um, and our website is the easiest way. It's um, nixwish.org, and it's nix with N-I-K-S. So there's no C in it. Yeah, it's nix, okay. Yeah, nixwish.org. Uh, oh, very cool. Uh, you mentioned events. What type of events do you typically host, put on, and do you have any coming up soon? Yeah, um, we have an annual event. It's called Nick's Home Run. It was the very first one we put on uh, 12 years ago, and it's always in October. It's a run and a walk, and it's a big auction. We also have another, a couple other annual events. The, one, the next one coming up is the Shamrock Beer Run. So okay. it's, a beer, it's kind of a beer tasting. Uh, I, Run is a strong word here. <laughs> it's more of a walk or a Maybe stumble. a stumble or a stagger. <laughs> stagger. Stagger, stumble, right. But at each one of the five Ks, there is a different local brewery that okay. has a little tasting cool. course. And then, of course, we have a big St. Patrick's Day party afterwards. Okay. And a big auction there as well. So we do do that. And then um, we also do another unusual one, which is uh, it's nothing but Smiles Pork Roast fundraiser. Oh. So we, we sell pork butts. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of butt Clever. jokes. Clever. Yeah. A lot of butt <laughs> jokes. We, we team up with Smoke and Coops here. Nice. There, okay. And they, uh, they smoke for us a ton, literally, a ton of butt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you buy one of these pork butts. And it's um, a five to seven a pound fully smoked pork roast. Okay. And then you buy it, and you, you and then you have it all uh, weekend for your Memorial Day celebration. Okay. You can freeze it and use it in the summertime for pulled pork man. Sure. So it's sure. Kind of a fun thing. That's really cool. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a lot of neat different events to keep it going, keep right. keep the donations coming in, and that's certainly important. Our newest one is called Golf for Joy. Okay. And so it's a golfing um, it's a golfing event, uh, but on all many of the holes there are some gimmicks, so places where you can win things or or do different types of stuff. So we try to make uh, Nick was all about fun, uh, so we try to make all the events have as much fun as. We I was just gonna say it sounds like you're <laughs> trying to channel that that yes. energy and keep that spirit alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> fun, fun. Uh, I mentioned your CNN hero uh, interview that I watched. What? Tell me about that. What does that feel like to be interviewed by CNN? It was scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I had no idea where it came from. Uh, just one day in January, I get this phone call that says, we're from the CNN research department. I'm like, wow. And so, you know, uh, we just want to ask you some questions, but don't get your hopes up because there's thousands and thousands okay. of applications all over the from all over the world. Yeah, so I didn't say anything to anybody because I didn't get my hopes up. Mm -hmm. But then they called back, <laughs> and be, then they before they went through all their uh, checks and all that, and then one day they were like, you know what, we are going to do a segment on you. So the the film crew actually came to here. And they followed us. They um, followed us on a wish reveal. Okay. And we had to tell someone that, that their wish was granted. And then uh, the second part of their segment was to go on an actual wish uh, with us. Yeah. With the patient. Um, 
Funny story about that, the first one they wanted to go on, she was too sick to go, so we had to switch to another patient who was headed to Maui. So the morning that they were to go, um, it was a Wednesday morning in August, and they were headed to Maui, and I got a call from CNN that said, are you sure you're sending Luke to Maui today? And I'm like, well, is this is 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, well, I think I am. Why? He's like, check out what's happening in Maui right now. Oh, it was oh. the Maui fires. Oh, jeez. So we had to, the family was actually at the airport. We had to get a hold of them and turn them around because mm. it was just too dangerous oh, for them sure. to go to Maui. And so the very uh, serious situation there. But then CNN was like, what wish do you have? Because we've got to we've got to finish this segment. <laughs> and I said, well, well, funny enough, we have a, a young woman who is at the Taylor Swift concert. Would you want to go there? They did not have the permits to go into the concert itself, so mm -hmm. so we um, so they did rely on some of the footage that the uh, people took, took, took yeah. the inside well, the thing. But but yeah, the the young lady Jordan, she was so excited to have CNN, uh, you know document her wish with her but of course she was she was already on her wish so this was a complete surprise for her okay yeah <laughs> but it was uh, uh, it was an incredible experience I'm so grateful for them to have created the, uh, the segment it really I think it really depicts what we do in a yeah it was really neat and I really like seeing a part of Nick's wish yeah. in there yeah. uh, the Maui trip and doing some fishing yeah. and all of that it looked like you all were having some Good fun and, like you said, a lot of good memories. We did. We had an amazing time. And we kind of model our wish deliveries after Make-A-Wish because they are the gold standard. Sure. Absolutely. That's for sure. This car really rides wonderfully. It does. I know. I feel like I'm like <laughs> sitting in my living room with you. I mean, wow. I'm so relaxed and everything. I even forgot we were driving for a while there. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I couldn't get one with massaging seats. Oh, I guess, uh... <laughs> they have those too. I think I Yes, know they do. <laughs> Goodness. That's it. <laughs> Very neat. This is beautiful, though. And, and of course, the most important question about this vehicle is, does it have a hitch? Well, 100%. You could pull that uh, lamp, lamp here behind you. <laughs> yes. Good, good, good. I see it's got everything. I, have you thought of everything? <laughs> Fantastic. It's beautiful. What would you like to say or what message would you have with anyone that is struggling with illness um, that uh, they're trying to get a wish granted as well? Um, first of all, please, let, if you know of anybody, let them know about us. Um, okay. You know, sometimes they're not um, thinking that they don't need the wish. They do. <laughs> sure. We've got a lot of people that, you know, they trip them like, well, you know, I don't, I just don't think I need the wish. Give it to someone else. It is really not only for the patient, but for the entire family. And to just to have that time together, it is, it is so important that, that you spend the time when you're feeling well. Uh, enough to go. Um, I, cancer can throw you the curveball, and yeah. you never know what's going to happen next in that cancer journey. So, um, you know, you have to love life and everything in it. Take nothing for granted. So, please, please let them know to, okay. to, to reach out, uh, get an application. The application process is very easy. It's uh, the form you fill out, and then we ask for some verification from your oncologist and a picture and it goes in front of our board, it gets approved, and before you know it, your wishmaker shows up, think fairy godmother type thing. <laughs> <laughs> and off we go, planning a wish. Yeah. You know, the, the um, wishmaker will plan everything. They don't have to worry about trying to come up with those details. We plan it all. Okay. The only thing you need to do uh, when you're on your wish is just to get yourself ready to have some fun and have your bag packed. <laughs> cool, well that sounds amazing. <laughs> And it sounds like you've got an amazing team around you. The oh. logistics to do all this and to be able to provide 300 plus witches yeah. in your tenure there is just amazing. So congratulations to you and your team for all that dedication and effort. Uh, well, uh, you know, you're, you're spot on. There is a, a, a village of people who are helping to lean in to do this as well as thank you for your support and sponsorship. I appreciate that. Absolutely. We're happy to. So how many wishes do you try to do a year? Is there a goal or? Um, you know, it's 
hard to plan it always because a lot of times the wishes will shift. Okay. Somebody will get sick and they'll say, oh, I have to move this wish, I have to change it. And we're prepared to handle that mm -hmm. for sure. So sometimes, even though we have so many planned, they do shift out or move around. Um, but generally, over the years, the, the last few years, COVID was a bit, was an oh, sure. anomaly there. But usually around 50 to 55 wishes a year will deliver. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think the one month, this month, was like a record-breaking month for us. We delivered like 16 wishes in one month. Holy they seemed cow. to. I mean, I was, it was like pe people were everywhere <laughs> trying yeah. to keep you. And you have to remember that not everybody is tr has traveled before. Okay, I, sure. I, I had this wish kid of mine. Um, his his name uh, was Corey, and Corey had a little son. He's about two years old, and his wish was to go to Disney. I had everything all planned out. I went through everything with him and. And you know, as a wish maker, you're kind of on call while the person is on their wish, just in case they need help or navigation or something. You know, travel can be tricky. So uh, it was about six o'clock in the morning, and I, and I I knew that the limo had picked it up and everything okay because I got the text messages and I was watching out. But I got the call and and it was uh, and it was Corey. I'm like, hey Corey, how's it going? Everything going okay? It's oh yeah, it was great. I'm like. The limo pick you up and everything okay? Oh yeah, it was great, it was fantastic. And I said, good, good. Everything going okay? He was like, you know, yeah, I'm at the airport here, but you know, how do I get on the plane? <laughs> I didn't explain that part. <laughs> so he'd never been through that na having to navigate through an airport. So yeah. it's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. And of course, in my mind, I'm like, what time is it? Where, where's the airport? Where's the airport? Where you are? Where are you? Which terminal are you at? You know, so panic was going through my yeah. head, but I was trying to navigate him through that so that he got there. But sure. once he got there, I just, the pictures of him, the love in his eyes and the, his little son, I mean, it was just... It was just a beautiful, beautiful wish come true for yeah. him and his son. That's great. That's great. Yeah, those those little details you might not think about no. right to begin with. <laughs> Holy no, cow! No, no, no. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you take it for granted that you know so many people have tra you know traveled one well, way right. or the other. Yeah. But you never, especially if you've traveled yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of start taking it. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. just you know easy peasy. But it's it's not. It's it can be confusing and overwhelming in some respects. Yeah. You know, and you never know delays and changes so you really the wish makers are on call uh, well, just to make sure like that they everything goes smoothly yeah uh, averaging one wish a week to then 16 in a month that's <laughs> holy cow that's a lot of work yeah yeah yep absolutely but you know it's all worth it now we have some thing wishes too which are not uh, travel we did uh, uh okay yeah uh one of them that comes up is sometimes it's musical instruments. Mm -hmm. Music is a big deal. And then some of them are computers. Uh, some really okay. souped up gaming system. Yeah. We have one of our volunteers, he helps he helps the, the wish kids actually build their own computer gaming computer. And this thing is is really, really cool. Yeah. And it's like cooled and it's uh all these lights and I don't know a lot about gaming. Me neither. <laughs> but, but from what I understand from the kids, it's 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 pretty neat. Cool. Well, that's fun to at least get them yeah, something that they're going to enjoy and yeah. to stuff to create those memories. And... Not everybody can travel, you know. Right. Yeah. Nor do they want to. Right. Yes. I'm starting to become more of a homebody myself. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I travel a lot vicariously through all these witches. I get to see all the pictures and the smiles. And that's beautiful. But oh, we made it back safely. We did. This was a nice ride, let me just tell you. Thank you very much for letting me not only get to talk about Nick's wish, but be able to be in this amazing car. <laughs> Well, and thank you for coming, sharing your story with all of us, and most importantly, doing what you do. It's thank you. that's amazing. <laughs> keep it up. We'll keep. We'll keep the doors keep opening. We'll keep walking through them. Absolutely. Uh -huh. well, it's a pleasure being here. Thank and you. thank you very much. <laughs>